How you doing? Nope. My name's not Ernest. I'm the lawnmower lady, and I like fixing small engines. Today's video is going to be a complete tune-up on a yard machine. Is that right? Yard machines. 21-inch lawnmower. Uh, I'm going to cover uh, spark plug, fuel, oil, air filter, the whole shebang. Follow along. Okay, this particular machine is a yard machine. It's a 21-inch side discharge. It has a Briggs & Stratton 6.75 horsepower. It's a 675 EX series. And I noticed it has some rodent damage. And uh, this is the dubious, uh, just never change your oil. Well, I don't do that. I'm changing the oil. I'll be draining the gas out of the tank. I don't know the status of that. And also draining the carburetor bowl. Hopefully that'll take care of that. I'll be checking the oil uh, and actually uh, changing it. I'll be draining it out of this side. I'll take this outside to do that. And this particular mower is uh, made by uh, MTD. They make a lot of them for a lot of people. The air filter on this particular mower, uh, there's a clip on the top that you lift up. And um, yeah, this is pretty dirty. Um, this is a paper filter. You can't clean these, um, and it looks like there's a little bit of oil, perhaps, that's uh, dripped into here. That's what that staining is right there. Wipe off the inside real well. Get as much of the dirt off of there as possible. The inside of the box is a little dirty as well. And the new one just goes on. Make sure it fits on there tight. And this particular cover has two tabs on the bottom. Uh, and put that in. Make sure those engage and then it snaps right back on the front right there. This mower has one of those uh, newfangled plastic carburetors. And um, actually this is not it. Uh, but I wanted, did want to show you that, uh, there is a drain plug on the bottom. I can show you how this, uh, little quarter turn device works so you can see what the goal here is. Uh, Allen key, turn it literally one quarter of a turn, it pops out, see those deep grooves in there, and then, you know, it will drain out at that point. And then back in, and another same quarter turn to tighten it in. Uh, there's not a lot of clearance up under here to operate this tool and even to like put a catch basin under there. It's near impossible to do that. So I'm going to put the catch basin underneath the mower. Uh, I use a, um, a socket and it gives me a little more clearance and then I put the catch basin under and it will drain out. I've cleaned off the deck so hopefully that will give us an idea of how dirty this is or is not. And it's just a quarter turn. Not quite quarter of enough. Give that a try. There we go. All right. I don't know if you can see all that draining out of there, but it is it is draining out now, and it's going down that hole in that little catch basin I have up under there. So let's give that a chance to drain. All right, the last thing I'm doing is using just a little bit of compressed air very lightly to force whatever's left in there, and it looks to me like there's a little bit droplets of water. I'll try to show you again. Not a whole lot of pressure. You can see the bubbles that are like bubbly things coming out of there. There, that is water that's left over in this carburetor. Very light pressure with my air gun. See a lot of bubbles right there. All right, so here's the verdict after uh, removing the plug. Uh, the gasoline is really, really dark color, and as you can see, I'm pretty sure all the dirt that's in here came from the deck or whatnot, but you can see that bubble of water right in the middle. Uh, that will all collect together. Um, so there you go. Um, really bad gasoline and water in the carburetor. Now that all the fuel is dried, I'm going to put the start, that plug in by hand. Uh, remember, you're upside down, so lefty loosey, righty tighty still applies, but you're upside down, so it's kind of easy to get messed up. All right, there it is. It's fallen into place. Going to add that 10 millimeter socket 
adapter and then give it that final quarter turn to tighten it in. That's it. Next on this hit parade is to check the spark plug. I'm using a 16 millimeter uh, magnetic socket. You can also use a 5 8 It has a rubber boot. There you go. Ooh, this is very, very dark, sooty, dirty, wet, oily, uh, no doubt uh, a result of the clogged air filter. And this is, uh, oh, this is not the original plug. This is some auto light plug. Um, I'm going to replace it anyway. The plug I'm using today is a uh, is actually the actual Briggs and Stratton part number, 491055. I just get them the best price I can. Uh, you can also use a Champion RC12YC or an NGK BKR5E. Um, I'm checking the gap on this plug. This is a uh, feeler gauge, 0 0.030 inches or 0.75 millimeters. And this is good. If you don't have a feeler gauge, um, you can use the backside of like a Stanley knife. That's the same 0 0.030 inches. So that's good. I'm thread that back in there. Start it by hand. Don't try to use a, a tool because it's too easy to cross thread that. All right. Tighten that on. No more than a quarter turn once it gets snug. All right, one last thing I do um, is uh, I check on the inside uh, to see if there's any, you know, damage in there. It looks clean. Uh, and then the other thing I do, which is uh, not uh, really necessary, it's just a little extra thing I do. This is an ill-fated thing of dielectric grease where all the aerosol came out. So I just get a shop Q-tip on there, uh, just a little on the outside. And then I just rub this around just on the rubber part. I'm not trying to get all the way down to the electrode, but if for any reason the ceramic um, cracks or gets broken, it will not um, mess up the spark. That's why they tell you in your car to check your spark plug wires at night. And then you hear that positive click. There it is, and that's done. Continuing on the right side of the mower, I'm going to check the oil here. And... Uh, yeah, it's dirty. I don't care. They say you shouldn't be just add and go. Um, this is dirty. Uh, and of course, overfilled. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but it is the, the actual fill point is right in between those two holes on the dipstick, and it is all the way up here. So no doubt somebody just uh, poured a whole quart in there. So that probably contributes to the dirty spark plug. Um, I'll be taking this out to drain it all out. All right, going to turn this over and uh, drain the oil out. And despite the dubious claims of never having to change your oil, that's some horribly dirty black oil coming out of there. Let it drain for a few minutes. Okay, the biggest mistake I see regarding oil is the wrong amount of oil going in here. The don't take a quart. Uh, all these motors take between 16 and 18 ounces. Uh, I use a 10W30. Um, check your owner's manual for the right oil for your area. Uh, since these mowers don't have a... Um, a drain plug anymore, there's always some residual amount. So pour it in very slowly. Uh, if you're kind of uh, shaky with your hands, you can always use a funnel, but with these larger spouts on top of the machines, it goes pretty easily. All right, that should be about 18 ounces. Check it with the dipstick. Not sure if you can see that or not, but it is just, just barely above the mark right there where the two holes are in the dipstick. So we're good to go. 
Um, I use a product to lubricate the cables called TriFlow. Um, the bicycle guys use this, so I figure if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. I spray just a touch right in the end of the cable. And then I operate the cable, the bail handle. Hopefully squeeze a little bit of that in there. Just a few squirts at the top and operate the cable and gravity will help feed that on in the rest of the way. And the final thing I do on a tune-up is I lubricate the wheels. I put a two by four up under there so the wheel can turn. Just a couple of drops of oil, not much. It will eventually seep in there. On the side with the adjuster, I also lubricate a little bit where that goes through. This one works fine. If it's frozen, I'll use some penetrating oil in there. Okay, in addition to lubing uh, these cables, I always check uh, for the tightness of uh, the handles and whatnot, especially these mowers with the plastic backs on them. Uh, if these are not tight, uh, and often they are assembled not very tightly, uh, there winds up with a lot of play in the handlebars, and these plastic pieces are very prone to breaking, and they're very hard to come by. Here's the moment of truth. Let's give it a whirl. That's how I do a complete tune-up on this Yard Machines 21-inch mower. If you have any comments or suggestions, please do put them in the comments section below. I read them all, and I try to respond to them, and I really appreciate all the input I'm getting from my viewers. If you like the video, please push the like and subscribe button, and I can make more of these videos. Remember, I'm the lawnmower lady, and as I'm fond of saying, mow happy. Thank you for watching.